بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله a comment was posted يا كافر you are not from the real salaf I am free from you in all murjia and I am free from the Daesh juhal who are like you why don't you do takfir on ahl shirk no one would call the sun moon and no one the moon as sun is tawheed and shirk not clearer than this yes it is the reason i allowed that post to be posted and that i'm even giving it any attention is that we can draw some valuable lessons from this uh, post and so i wanted us to benefit from what the person sam aslan or something like this or aslan something like this uh has uh, posted because I think there's some great value that we can gain and one of the just to make it short one of the important points that we can derive from this comment is we see this is an excellent illustration of the ignorance of uh, uh, regarding the mas'ala to takfir the issue of takfir of decreeing a Muslim to be an apostate which is something reserved for the ulama and you can see why because of the complexities of this issue but with the Khawarij, the original sect, and the contemporary, um, their contemporary counterparts who inherited the same uh, ideology and aqidah and methodology, you see for them it's easy to take shortcuts. It, basically, anyone who opposes you, you declare them to be a disbeliever. And unfortunately, you see this even amongst people who claim to be Salafi, that they will either they will make takfir or they'll make tibdiya. They'll consider you an innovator if they disagree with you. It won't be based on hujjah wal bayan, meaning uh, evidences and proofs. And so that is the first lesson we can draw from uh, this individual's comment. Also, we see that this individual, it's very clear from the comment that they make tabdi, uh, uh, declaring a person to be an innovator, and even greater than that, or worse than that, if you will, uh, declaring me to be a disbeliever without any criterion. We didn't hear any criterion. They just It was just simply names being thrown out. Uh, uh, another point that we want to mention is also this illustrates the poor, uh, which often accompanies ignorance, which is arrogance uh, and uh, a lack of manners. And we already know the hadith and so many ahadith of the Prophet wasallam showing us that the... Uh, that a characteristic of the people, the mu'mineen, a sifat of Ahl Sunnah, those adhering to the book and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, that with strong iman, that they are uh, good in manners. Because the Prophet wasallam said, "Ma min shayin atkulhi fi meizan mu'min yom al-qiyam min husnu khulq wa inna Allaha yubghidu al-fahish al There isn't a scale that there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of a believer then good manners, and verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. And so you can see from the adab, uh, within the first uh, sentence, this individual uh, make takfir of me, uh, address me as Ya Kafir. You are not from the real Salaf. Okay, that's the second point. Made ta'an for in, in my uh, uh, kind of a, a slander in my methodology, I guess. And also, the third point, he distanced himself from me, which is fine and said that I'm from the Murjia. Okay, so that was three. Then the fourth uh, uh, aspect, and this is all in one sentence, he said that I am like the Daesh Juhal, meaning the ISIS uh, terrorist extremists, that uh, I'm ignorant like they are. Okay, so those are about four different ways of illustrating uh, very unbefitting behavior of the believer which also show a type of arrogance and a type of air about oneself that someone that someone believes that they are uh, on a path of righteousness and that they are on the haq and to such an extent to where they declare you to be a disbeliever and this is a common trait of the original uh, khawarij uh the Next point that we can mention, that's all of, the, all of this we can find within these four, four or five lines, is that this also illustrates that this individual is quick in making judgments, uh, rulings without evidence. 
because they gave no evidence evidence and this is also a trait of the original Khawarij and the their those who inherited their ideology that they are quick to make takfir of all leaders without proof with simply claims that no one's ruling by the Sharia and things like this uh, they will make takfir of the scholars of Ahl Sunnah for whatever reasons for a hujja wahiyah meaning that they have a hujja which is weak it's sick it's lacking it's wanting it's in need of evidence it's in need and soundness and authenticity they don't have it uh, and we also see as a last point is that this individual is illustrating that this is in accordance with their desires because if you don't have something based on proofs then the opposite of that is obviously it's based on your whims and your desires meaning what feels good to you it's easy for you to make takfir of someone it's easy to make tabdi of someone who is your opponent or who you disagree with without proofs and that makes you feel good so that's what that's something which is desirable to your nafs it is something which is pleasing to your uh to your own desires your own hawa the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam mentioned in an authentic hadith in uh, Sahih Muslim. He sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, and he was talking about Dhu Khuwaisira. When he came and he said to the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam, he said, be just. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied to him, you know, who is, is just if I'm not just? And so he came in a rough, arrogant manner, belittling the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam similar to the conduct of we see from Mr. Aslan and the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam responded he said in the men the the hadha qawm yaqra'oon al-Qur'an la yajawaz hanajirihim yaqtuluna ahla al-Islam wa yad'oona ahla al-Uthan yamraquuna min al-Islam kama yamraqu saham min al-Rami لَإِنْ أَدْرَقْتُهُمْ لَأَقْتَلُوهُ أَقْتَلُهُمْ قَتْلَ الْعَادِ The Prophet ﷺ said that from the loins of this, uh, of this people, meaning Dhu Khuwaisara and his progeny, there will be a people who will read the Qur'an and it will not pass beyond their throats. They kill or fight the people of Islam. The Muslims. And they leave the people of polytheism. They will pass through Islam similar to the way that the arrow passes through its prey. And if you meet them, then you should fight them similar to the fighting of the people of Ad, you know, of the killing of the people of Ad. So showing us that this is a characteristic which is madhmum to be of those people who are quick to make takfir, takfir of their opponents. Because subhanAllah, and this is from the Bab of Faida, I've met so many takfiris that I've known over the years. And so many of them, alhamdulillah, some of them they came to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and they left their previous uh, methodologies. Some of them, you, you, they usually play ping pong in their minhaj. And some of, many of them actually left Islam. That they were the hardest, core, staunchest. Some of them, they traveled with their wealth and their property. They met individuals in the Taliban. They were convicted of crimes with them. They suffered from America to the UK to sit with Abu Hamza, to sit with uh, uh, Faisal and others. And, and some of those guys, some of those same individuals are not even Muslim anymore. They apostate. Because you, this is what the Salaf used to say, that often that extremism, as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said first, that it leads to... You know, it leads to your breaking. And this is the sifat of the Khawarij. They, as the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, that they, yamrukuna min al-Islam, kama yamruku saham min al-Rami. They pass through Islam similar to the way that the arrow passes through its prey. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam also said, al-Khawarij kilab al-Nar. The Khawarij, they're the dogs of the hellfire. This is why you don't even want to go near those traits. Those traits, the trait of takfir, leave it. Don't ask, you know, don't get involved in these issues. I, I, I don't understand, sorry for the rant, why individuals are still asking about Bashar al-Assad. 
who's a demon. He's not a Muslim. About rebelling about him and rebelling against him and doing this and do what in the world does that have to do with you living in Cardiff? What in the heck does that have to do with you living in Stockholm? What is the relationship between you in uh, New York City asking these kind of questions? I don't understand how this brings you closer to Allah. How do you need to get into these kind of masail and you may not even have mastered that which is a requirement of the mubtadiyin? meaning those who are beginners. So why are you asking them and getting involved in these kind of things? Wallah musta'an. The Prophet ﷺ said, Saba Muslim, Fusuk. The Prophet ﷺ said in Sahihain, that cursing a Muslim is fisk, it's wickedness. So where do you fit on that? The Prophet ﷺ said, Either call a Muslim, li akhihi ya kafir, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said that if a Muslim says to his brother, his Muslim brother, Ya Kafir, O oh, disbeliever, and he is not as the one claimed, claimed, then that ruling that goes back on, it goes back on him. Ahabatifillah, that should be enough to make us fear involving ourselves and, and, and attacking just because we differ with someone. Even if the person is wrong, you can't make a, a hukum of takfir on them. And even if the person is wrong, you don't quickly make tibdi of them. You can't. Unless their usul, their foundation, their whole, their methodology, their madhab is clearly away from the madhab of Ahl Sunnah. But if they have a base, of, of, of Ahl Sunnah, then of course you want to advise, and of course you want to, uh, 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 you know, you know, give gentle advice and have lean or rift as the scholars of uh, of Ahl Sunnah have in the past, up until now, have uh, illustrated and articulated for us. Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiAllahu ta'ala anhu said, "Talaq al haq ida sami'at." He said, take the truth if you hear it. For verily, the truth is light, it's nur. So Ahl Sunnah takes the truth from wherever they get it. So it's imperative to take the truth. And not be the people of desires and ta'asab. You know, who, who, who blind, have blind partisanship. Dilili Abi Bakr ibn Iyash, rahimahullah ta'ala, men is Sunni. So it was said to Abi Bakr ibn Iyash, rahimahullah ta'ala, who is a Sunni? Basically, who's a Salafi? Who's a Sunni? Who is this? What is the criterion? Qal, alladhi idha dhukirat al-ahwa indahu, he said, answering, who is a Sunni, he said, he is the one that if desires are mentioned to him, that he does not have blind partisanship to anything. You know, he accepts the truth. And he doesn't follow a madhab based on his desires, as we see from Mr. Sam Asli. Qala Abu Hassan al Multi fi kitabihi tanbi wa rad. Wa shara'atu kulluhum yukafiruna ashab al ma'asi wa man khalifihim fi madhabihim ma la ikhtilaf aqawilihim wa madahibihim. Abu Hassan al Multi he mentions in his book which is called a tinbi wa rad ala ahl al ahwa wal bid'ah. He mentions about the Khawarij and one particular sect of the Khawarij, which in fact is a trait of uh, many of the Khawarij, as he mentions. He, so he mentions the shara'a. He says, Kulluhum, all of them, they make takfir of the people for their major sins. And those people who differ with them. In their madhab. 
regardless or in relationship to with in in regards to all the various akawil, all the different uh, views and ideologies and 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 medhabs and and other medhabs, meaning that what we see in in common with Mr. Aslan is that he, similar to the original Khawarij, they make takfir of those people who differ with them. Instead of hujja wa bayan, as we mentioned, it's it's hawa, it's desires. So the fact that someone differs with you on a mas'ala, you've, you've taken them out of the fold of Islam. And these are various dangerous traits. And this is why, Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah says, Rahimahullah ta'ala, Al-Kufr hukum shari'i, mutalaqqa an sahib sharia wa aql, qad ya'lam bihi sawab al qawl wa khata'ahu, wa laysa ma kana khata'in, it's very important. Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions, he said, declaring someone, you know, to be a disbeliever, this is a hukum shari. This is a sharia-based ruling. And it is understood by those, by the people of the sharia, meaning ahl al the people of knowledge and intellect. And that is due to the reason that they know what is a correct statement and what is a mistake you know what's an error and he said and everything that is a mistake according to someone's intellect is not disbelief in accordance with the shara so here we have a situation where mr aslan is made takfir based on his limited understanding with no hajjah no ban no proof Again, that's his aql, his intellect, but not in accordance to the shara. It's a very dangerous uh, thing to involve yourself in. Make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam uh, bin Uthameen, rahimahullah ta'ala, will end with this statement. He says, Al-hukm fi takfir wa tafsiq laysa ilayna bel huwa illallahi ta'ala wa rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fu huwa min al-ahkam shari'iyya allati Muraddaha il al kitabi wa sunnah, fa yajibu tathabbat fihi, ghaya tathabbat, wala yukafiru, wala yufasaku, illa mandalla al kitabi wa sunnah ala kufrihi wa fiskihi, wal asl fil muslim al dahir al adala, bakal islamihi, wa baka adalatihi, hatta yatahakak zawal dalika anhu, bi maktada ad. Dalil a shari wala yajuza tasahil fi takfirihi o tafsikihi wahada bab kad ghalata fi hil khawarij ghaltan aldeeman. This is a beautiful statement and we're ending it right here. Imam bin Uthaymeen he said, Rahimallah ta'ala, he said, Hukum fi takfir. He said, The ruling of takfir and tafsik, you know, declaring someone to be a wicked sinner, and also likewise tibdi' of declaring someone to be a mubtadi'a. This is not for us. Rather, it is for Allah, the Almighty, and His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because this is from the Sharia rulings, which must be returned back to the book in the Sunnah, and it is an obligation to make tathabbat, you know, to affirm something, to make sure of something, to check and make sure of something, in the most. In the most complete manners of, uh, of affirming something and checking something, and do not make uh, declare someone to be a disbeliever or a wicked sinner, except from what the Quran and the Sunnah shows as far as someone uh, as far as this person's disbelief and as far as this person's uh, wickedness and the asl, the origin of the Muslim, of Zahir. You know, that's apparent, is that he is just a, a, a zahir of al adala, the origin of a Muslim, which is uh, in his appearance that he's, uh, um, you know, he's trustworthy, he a, has an adala, that is the, is the baqa Islam he is, that Islam, his Islam remains intact, I meaning you can't remove Islam by doubt. And this goes back to al yaqeen, la yuzul yaqeen bishak. 
that you cannot remove something with certainty based on doubt. And we'll talk about that really quickly. Well, Baka Adalati, so his uh, his uh, trustworthiness remains until it has been completely affirmed that it has been removed by what the evidence from the Sharia necessitates, not your desires. And it is not permissible to be easy in these rulings, to be easy in making takfir of him, or tafsik of him, declaring him to wicked, to be wicked. And this in this issue, the Khawarij, they made severe mistakes. Okay, a point I want to mention, as Imam bin Uthameen, as he was a faqih, he mentions a beautiful fiqh principle right in there. And so we're going to emphasize that, is that, as we mentioned, uh, So when it comes to the adalah of a Muslim, when it comes to the trustworthiness of a Muslim, we see a brother at the masjid, we see a sister at the masjid, or one teaching, or whatever the case is. We hold them to be a Muslim. We believe they're a Muslim. We don't doubt, and then they have to affirm their Islam. No, he's given the khutbah, he, he's a Muslim. Unless something shows, which is clear, and clearly evidence, and someone from knowledge makes this ruling, and they tatabbaq, you know, they, 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 they put the, uh, apply the principles of the wabit to takfir, the criterion for takfir. Upon this ma'ayin, because this is the difference between takfir and ma'ayin and takfir and mutlaq, and we talked about this before, we're not going to talk about it now. And so, that person's Islam remains, as Ben Uthameen mentions. These are quiet sharia. These are sharia-based principles, not takfiri-based principles, not kufri-based principles, not hawa-based principles, not mubtadi'a-based principles. These are the principles of Ahlul Sunnati with Jama'ah. So that their Islam stays in place until there is evidence to show clear evidence and, and all those criteria as we mentioned to remove their Islam. And that's what we mean by the doubt. So if you have doubt about someone's Islam, that doesn't remove their Islam. You know, they're, they're a Muslim. I don't know if I can pray behind them. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm, no. The asal is you can pray behind him because he's a Muslim. The asal is he's, he's a Muslim and you treat him as a Muslim until you need some evidence. You can't just say, no, I think there are extreme Sufis who worship the grave. I'm not going to pray in their masjid. No, maybe they are Sufis, but you cannot remove their Islam based on your doubt. If you understand what I'm saying. So I hope this is clear. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, guides us and guides this individual and makes this a source of guidance. May Allah forgive us all. And I free my heart from... Uh, any hatred toward this individual uh, and I, I forgive him and I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides him and that's it.